And I said it last Sunday, and I'll say it again. Don't get too comfortable. Ha. Virgo season's right behind you. <laughs> Our pledge for growth. Please remember to pay at least $10 above your tithes and offering. Our Sunday school begins at 940 every Sunday. Morning worship at 11 a.m. Today, August the 13th, we are celebrating our pastor, Elder Marcus Underwood Sr.'s eighth pastoral anniversary. Amen. <laughs> And remember that each ministry is asked for $250. Each committee is asked for $100. And continue to pay your dollars here in the little miniature church throughout the day and for the Sundays to come. Monday, August 14th, 12 noon, there will be a Golden Age ministry meeting. And all of these meetings on Sunday, August the 20th, Kingdom's Church will be that Sunday. Immediately following morning service, the usher board and junior usher board meeting, and the welcome committee will meet also. And remember to keep all of our sick and shut in and bereaved families in prayer, and a special prayer to one of our very own choir members, Miss Stephanie Smith. Stephanie uh, had to have emergency surgery this past Friday, and we're asking that you all keep her in prayer, her and her family, and also our oldest male member, Brother LaRue Mosley, keep him in prayer. Thank you. Good morning, Greater Liberty. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we are here to celebrate our pastor's eighth pastoral anniversary. We want to welcome each and every one of you. We see new faces, old faces, back then faces, and right now faces. Um, on the behalf of our pastor, we want to come and uh, he says, where well, the feast of the Lord moves on or goes on. I get it confused every Sunday. But uh, we want to welcome you to kick your feet, jump, shout, scream, whatever you might please to do. Um, if you haven't said welcome to someone that you haven't seen before, make them feel welcome uh, of being a part of the Greater Liberty Baptist Church. Again, we say welcome and God bless. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord, everybody. May we stand while our pastor and first lady make their way to the sanctuary. Come on and make some noise. Y'all can do better than that. to make some noise for our pastor and first lady. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. How, do you, how many of y'all came to worship today? Okay. How many God didn't pay your bills this week? How many ways has God made for anybody in here? Come on, you ought to tell God, thank you for the ways you made. You, you ought to tell God, thank you for the doors you opened. To God be the glory. Listen, we came to celebrate our pastor today. But most of all, we came to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. If you don't mind, just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do, but I came to bless the Lord. 
I'm on the battlefield. I'm on the battlefield. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Yeah. And I promise him that I, I will serve him till I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. This will light a man. Everywhere I go Yeah. Call him up, yeah. Call him up, yeah. Call him up. 
time. Ready? Call him up. Your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. all you got to do is just call him up. If you need deliverance, just call him up. If you need healing, just call him up. Said he's on the main line. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mama's phone might be busy. Yeah. Daddy's phone might be busy. My brother's phone might be busy. But I know a number that is never busy. Call him up. Call him up. Call him up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, church. Our scripture reading will be coming from Psalms 27, verses 1 through 4. Psalms 27, verses 1 through, 7, 1 through 4, I'm sorry. And it reads as follows. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. This is the word of God for the people of God. Glory be to God. Let us pray. To the only and wise God, Lord, we come this day for no other reason but to lift up your son, Jesus Christ. Yes, we came to celebrate our great pastor, and we thank you for sending him our way, Father. But Lord, you said this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice in your name today, Father. So Lord, we thank you for yet another opportunity just to say thank you, Father. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for keeping us, Father. Even sometimes from ourselves, Lord. Lord, we say thank you for all that you do. We're not worthy of anything, Father. But we serve such a good God, such a great God. Father, you continue to bless us anyway, Father. When we're not deserving of it. When we don't even sometimes acknowledge of what you do for us, Father. You still bless us anyway, Father. For that we say thank you, Father. Oh, you're such an awesome God. You do all things well, but we know you can't ever fail. That's why, Father, when we fail, you say your strength is made perfect, Father. When we are weak, we know we can call up on your name, Father. Some things will be changed. The devil will be mad. <laughs> but who cares about the devil? Lord, we say, give you glory today, Father. We praise you today, Father. Lord, we ask you to be with the preacher that's coming to break the bread of life unto your people. Stand in him, stand through him. Remove him, Father, and let us see nothing but your glory today, Father. Lord, we say thank you because somebody needs to hear a rhema word today 
Somebody had a rough week. Somebody had a rough morning. But Lord, we know if we just have a little talk with you, it'll make it all right, Father. So Father, I just pray that somebody, just, whatever they standing in need of, Father, they just lift it up to you. Lift it to the altar and leave it. Leave it. Because sometimes we try to work it out ourselves, Father, when you already got it worked out. So let us be patient on you and wait. Lord, we thank you again. Forgive us what we're falling short. Lord, we ask you to bless all the sick and shut in, Father. Praying for our brother, Ruud Mosley, right now, Father, that you comfort him right now. Ask you to be with Bucky. Lord, you know what's going on with him, but Lord, you continue to, to bring him through another day. We say thank you for his sister that stands by his side and his wife. Lord, we give you all praise today, Lord, because you're worthy, Father. You're worthy to be praised today, Father. We always say if you don't do anything else, you did enough. But Lord, I truly believe that. I truly believe you done done enough for me, Lord. What can I do for you today, Father? What can I do for you today, Father? That's the question I got. Let thy will be done, the Father. Order my steps today, Father. Order my steps today. Not my own step, but order your will, Father. And we'll be sure to give you all praise and glory today, Father. We thank you, we love you, we adore you. For well, this is the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. Amen, amen, and amen. The scripture says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Amen. May everyone stand for our congregation here. God send his son. God send his son. They called him Jesus. Call him Jesus. He, came he came to love. Heal and forgive. Heal and forgive. He bled and died. By my pardon, an empty grave, yeah, it's there to prove my Savior lives. Oh, yeah, everybody, because he lives. Yeah, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth. Because he lives, and then one day, oh yeah, I cross the river, I'll fight life, find a war with pain. Oh, 
And in his death Give way to victory I see the light Of glory, of glory, and I know He lives. I know. Yeah, yeah, everybody, because He lives. Oh yeah. I can face tomorrow. Because He lives. Because I know He knows the future And life is worth The living just Because He lives mission statement. Our mission is to reach the world of wrong, teaching them the infallible gospel of God's grace through his darling son, Jesus Christ, and the truth unto salvation. Amen. Good morning, church. It's now time for offering. The box to the left of me is the tie box. The box in front of me is pastor's anniversary. Ministers and deacons, come at this time, please. Will the people left in the annex stand and follow the direction of the usher, please? Come on, choir, here we go. Press down. Press down, shaking together, running over. Press down. Press down, shaking together, running over. With the rest of the end, running over. Follow the direction of the motion, Blessings running over. Blessings running over. Running over. Running over. Press down.
Up in the balcony, staying in the direction of the usher, please. Running over. Running over. Blessings running over. Blessings running over. Running over. Running over. Back to the top. Press down. People left on the sanctuary stand by the direction of the usher, please. When you give, when you give unto the Lord, He will give you more. So cheerfully, now bring your offering. And God help us Blessings running over. Blessings running over. Running over. Running over. When you give unto the Lord, when you give. When you give unto the Lord, He will give you more. Now bring your offering. Unto. Pick in the center of the sanctuary stand, find the record of the usher, please. Yes, yes, bless it, bless it, 
God, thank you for an opportunity to give back the small portion which has been given unto us. God, I pray that this offering is used for the magnification and glorification of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, I say these things. Amen. 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 Right before this choir comes, there is a preacher in the house. Amen. Today. He is no stranger to this house. He is Pastor Nicholas Jones. Yeah. He is the husband of Mrs. Sierra Bragg Jones. Mm -hmm. He is the proud pastor of the first church in Sweetwater, Tennessee. He needs no introduction. But if you don't mind, stretch out your hand towards him and say, Pastor Jones, Pastor Jones preach, the word. preach the word. And we will, and we will be, a be a witness. Amen. Praise Jehovah. The King. The King of Kings. Praise Jehovah. Praise Jehovah. You're my everything. You're my everything. From the rising of the sun. From the rising of the sun. To the going down. I am. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter. Enter his gates thanksgiving. with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Enter his courts oh, yeah. with praise. Be thankful to him. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, yeah. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Yeah. Enter his courts with praise. Enter his courts with praise. With praise. Be thankful to him. Be thankful to him. And bless his name. And
every knee. From the rising of the sun. From the rising of the sun. To the going down of the same. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. One more time, have for the rising of the sun. This song right here has got a lot of words to it. That's why I got my cheat sheet. I want to make sure everything flow the way it's supposed to flow. All right. Y'all with me? I mean, how y'all with me? We can to flow this song. We can to sing this song. We're going to give God praise. I'm going to have a seat. All right? All right? Gertie, Gertie. Come on. Put your hands together. Let's give God some praise. came in my mind why would I be if the Lord himself had never turned back the time yeah. I would still be lost in the state that I was in if the hand of God had never come along and brought me out of sin but when the devil thought he had me yeah. I sure got away yeah. as a result of my gratitude there's one thing I can say is Lord I thank you yes I do I'm about to try 
trials that I had faced. I never would have made it this far without your amazing grace. And when I felt like I couldn't keep myself, you kept me safe this far. And I testify to all the world that you were alone on God. But when the devil thought he had me, I sure got away. There's a regard of my gratitude. There's one thing I can say is, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Yes, I do. Lord, you love me. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Everything you've done for me, oh, Lord. Lord, I thank you. Yes, I do. Lord, you love me. Lord, I thank you. Go through every hour. I cast on you my, my burden, you Lord, you give me strength to go through every hour. I cast on you my, my burden, you Lord, you give me strength just to make it every hour. I cast on you my, my burden, you Lord, you give me strength just to go through every hour. I can't so you, I can't. my burdens you, there's nobody, there's nobody, nobody like Jesus, there's nobody, nobody like Jesus, there's nobody, nobody like Jesus, nobody like Jesus, nobody like Jesus, I searched all over, couldn't find nobody, nobody like Jesus, Nobody like Jesus. I could find nobody to care for me. Couldn't find nobody to care for me. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like the man from Galilee. There's nobody. Nobody like Jesus. He said that I come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly i came because i love you i came because i care i came because i could keep you i came and i'm always there i search here and there i search here and there i look to my left and i look to my right i couldn't find nobody to help me fight this fight so i look towards heaven I look towards heaven. I look towards heaven. I look towards heaven. Then came Jesus. Then came Jesus. Mary's little baby. Mary's little baby. He came and he saved me. He came and he raised me. And now he's keeping me. And now he's loving me. And now he's watching me. And now he's holding me and now he's rocking me and now he's delivering me and now he's teaching me and now he's loving me and now he's loving me and now he's loving me I won't turn back cause he is mine I won't turn back cause I am his I won't turn back cause he is mine I won't turn back Cause I am here, I won't turn back. Cause I am here, I won't turn back. Cause I am here. I said that there's nobody, there's nobody, nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. There's nobody, there's nobody, nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. I said he'll save me. I told you he raised me. I told you he loved me. I told you he loved me. I said he'll rock you in the midnight hour. My God will see about you in the midnight hour. I said there's nobody. There's nobody. Nobody like Jesus. I said there's nobody. There's nobody. Nobody like Jesus. 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 There's nobody. There's nobody. Rocking me and now he's delivering me and now he's healing 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 me and now he's 
delivering me and now he's delivering me and I won't turn back cause he is mine I won't turn back cause I am his I won't turn back cause I am his and no because there's nobody nobody like Jesus there's nobody nobody like Jesus nobody like the man from Galilee Nobody like the man who died for me. Like I said there's nobody. nobody like I said there's nobody. nobody, like nobody like I wouldn't take nothing like for my journey now. Nobody like I said there's nobody. 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 nobody, like I said, there's nobody. nobody like I said there ain't nobody, nobody like Jesus. I told you we don't flow, and I'm ahead of my seat. Then it's time for the word of the Lord, where everybody can be blessed. Hallelujah. Get ready for the word. Get ready for the word. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. Brother Demetrius, I'm not a singer like Marcus. <laughs> so I had to find a song I could just talk out. <laughs> hey, Amen. Just call me Kirk Franklin. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy. Let's set the atmosphere. All the glory. One more time, we give you all the glory. Alpha and Omega, come on one more time.
We give you all the glory. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. We're blessed today to celebrate this young man, Elder Marcus D. Underwood Sr. His wife, Sister Tina, on eight years. Amen, amen. We honor you on today, sir. Thank God for this awesome opportunity to come and to share with you guys. To his sons and his entire family, we are thankful to God for safe tra travel, safe travel here once again. Thankful to my wife, Sierra, and her parents, Mr. and Ms. Bragg. Thank you so much for coming. We've had a great time. Thank God for the accommodations and gift baskets and all the love that has been shown. Thank God for Elder John Underwood, God bless you, sir. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. Amen to all the ministers of the gospel, membership, leadership, and to this dynamic choir and praise team and musicians. Amen. Amen. It's just good to be back home in Kentucky. Amen. Amen. So we thank God so much. Let me again thank Elder Underwood. Sister Tina and the whole family for coming down and celebrating with us on our first pastoral anniversary. Uh, we were so blessed by your presence and blessed by the word of God. Before we get into the message this morning, before we get into that, I've got to thank my sister, Wings with a Twist. Amen for blessing me last night. Amen, amen. I'm a little sleepy because of those wings, but God is good to us. Amen, amen. Thank you so much being a blessing to us. Amen. Let me share with greater liberty with what the Holy Spirit shared with me. The Holy Spirit said worship is headed to another level and the atmosphere is going to be so saturated with God's presence that the word of God is going to fall on fertile ground that saves souls, gives hope, and changes lives. But for this to happen, God wants each of you to understand and acknowledge that application must be a byproduct of worship. Nicholas, what are you saying? I'm saying there is more to worship than just raising the roof off this building for two hours on Sunday morning and doing what you want to do after the benediction. But it's time to apply the word of God that is being taught weekly to your daily lives so that you resemble more of Christ and less of yourself. That's the way the Holy Spirit gave it to me. This morning, we're going to turn our attention to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, verses 3 through 7. And when you have it, if you'll stand to your feet, 
for the reading of God's Word. Titus chapter 3, verses 3 through 7. Give honor to my mother who, who is home back in Knoxville. And thank you for your prayers and your love and the passing of my father on last year. Thank you so much for your love and your kindness. Titus chapter 3, verses 3 through 7. And when you have it, if you'll say amen. amen. It reads... At one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior so that having been justified by his grace we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. Let us pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for praise. Thank you for worship. Lord, thank you for blessing Marcus for eight years. God, thank you for blessing greater liberty. Thank you, God, for the higher heights that you're about to take them to. God, thank you for this worship service. Now, God, now, Lord, as we come to this preaching moment, God, I pray, Lord, that you hide me behind the cross that folks may see Jesus and not see Nicholas. God, give me preaching power. Give me clarity of mind, thought, and wisdom that we may lift you up just for a little while. God, we'll be careful to give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. With the aid of the Holy Spirit this morning, I'd like to preach from the topic, Ain't He All Right? <laughs> Want to preach from the topic, Ain't He All Right? Family, this morning we turn our attention to the third chapter of Titus. Enduring word commentary helps us to remember where we were once shows up the fallen nature is not so far from even us. And we need constant reminding to stay where we should be in the Lord. Remembering this work of God builds four things in and through us. First, gratitude for how God changed us. Secondly, humility as we see that it is his work that changed us. Third, kindness to others in the same place that we were. And finally, faith that God can change those who are still in that place. And if you've ever heard Marcus preach, you have heard the phrase, ain't he all right? And I've just come this morning to echo those sentiments on, eighth, on his eighth pastoral anniversary because I know that my Lord and your Savior is all right. How do you know he's all right? Because he was Hezekiah's lifeline. He was Moses' mouthpiece. He was Esther's weight maker. He was Job's mind regulator. He was Lazarus' CPR. He was Daniel's protector. He was Nehemiah's architect. He was Marcus's manifestation. He was Tina's testimony. He was Nicholas's navigation. He was Sarah. A savior. He was John's joy. Family, every now and again, you got to declare and decree, ain't he all right? See, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Woke up this morning walking and talking with my mind stayed on the Lord. Brother Demetrius, Psalm chapter 63, verses 1 through 5 states, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh no longer for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory so as I've seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus I will bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with morrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. And would you help me set the atmosphere in the sanctuary by just declaring out loud, ain't he all right? In the morning, ain't he all right? In the noonday, ain't he all right? Late in the midnight hour, ain't he all right? Because he does above and beyond what we may ever ask or what we may ever think or imagine. 
And Elder Underwood, there are many reasons I know he's all right. But I want to airdrop three of those reasons to your spirit this morning. First, ain't he all right because my foolishness didn't deter or delay his faithfulness. Roddy, my foolishness didn't deter or delay his faithfulness. Titus chapter 3 verse 3 states, At one time Nicholas was foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. Nicholas lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. Greater liberty each of us should be running around the sanctuary this morning thanking God for his faithfulness. Because Marcus, I realized that some of the foolishness I partook in, nobody made me do it. Nobody made me say it. Nobody made me participate. Nobody drove me there. I willingly and knowingly got into some foolishness. You, you know those nightclubs that were one way in and one way out, but I just had to get involved in some foolishness. And Elder Young, my first shout this morning is I'm reminded of the lyrics that say, great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not as thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, unto me. Thank you, Jesus, that my foolishness, my disobedience, my passions, my pleasures, my malice, my envy didn't deter or delay your faithfulness. Because Romans chapter 5, verse 8 states, but God commanded his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Brother Matthew, he was faithful when they carried him from judgment hall to judgment hall. He was faithful as they carried him up Calvary's mountain. He was faithful as they pierced him in his side. He was faithful when they put nails in his hands and his feet. He was faithful when they put a crown of thorns on his head. He was faithful when he put his head in the locks of his shoulder. He was faithful when he stayed in Joseph's bar or tomb. Ain't he all right because early Sunday morning he not only got up with all power, but when he got up, he paid for my foolishness and he paid for your foolishness. And glory to his name, it didn't deter or delay his faithfulness toward us. And Marcus, I'm excited and thankful and humbled because Jesus the Christ was faithful to me, get this, before I was faithful to him. He was faithful when I was dipping and diving. He was faithful when I was straddling the fence. He was faithful in looking beyond my faults and meeting me at my point of need. Greater liberty, I can't move to point number two until I remind you that we're celebrating the eighth pastoral anniversary of Elder Marcus D. Underwood Sr., and that's significant because the number eight represents new beginnings. And Marcus, I'm excited about your future, sir, and the future of greater liberty because we serve a God that does not give out stale things. Because Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 through 23 states, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is their faithfulness. Now, there's new beginnings happening at 330 Chestnut Street. Isaiah 43 verses 18 through 19 states, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Brother Reg, one of my favorite movies is from an old school movie that you guys may have heard of. It featured Eddie Murphy and Nick Nolte. Marcus, the name of this movie was called 48 Hours. And one scene in the movie, they find themselves in a chaotic fight in a bar. And Eddie pulls out a gun to stop the chaos and reminds the patron that there's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> And his name is Reggie Hammond. And Brother Robbie, I just got a text message from the Holy Ghost that stated new worship, new praise, new, new power, new equipment, new healings, new deliverance, new restoration, new forgiveness, new salvation. Brother Demetrius, it's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing is coming greater liberty's way. It's a season of power, of prosperity. It's a new season coming to greater liberty. So get ready to show your appreciation by applying Psalm 100, which states, Shout for joy to the Lord, 
all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter the gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Sister Tina, first, ain't he all right? Because my foolishness didn't deter or delay his faithfulness. Secondly, ain't he all right? Because my lack didn't stop his love. Thank you, Jesus. My lack didn't stop his love. Titus chapter 3 verses 4 through 5 states but when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared he saved us not because of righteous things we had done but because of his mercy he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit I know I'm in church this morning preaching the good news of Jesus Christ but can I keep it 100 with you there are things, Marcus, in my life that I lack. Lack of praying, lack of reading the word, lack of listening to God all the time. But, but Sister Tina, glory to his name. My lack did stop his love because over in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have this thing called everlasting life. So no matter what you lack this morning, the love of Jesus supersedes that lack. And I can rejoice this morning because in spite of my lack, he still loves me. In spite of my past, he still loves me. In spite of my sin sickness, he still loves me. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 37 states, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine? Or nakedness or danger or sword. As it is written, for you sake, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered a sheep to be slaughtered. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Church family, the devil wants to expose your lack, but the Lord wants to express his love. Let me say it one more time. The devil wants to expose your lack, but the Lord wants to express his love. Because his love can help us overcome and have victory over our lack. And many of us have financial lack. Mark, I'm going to talk about money now so it might get a little quiet. Many of us have financial lack. Get this, because we're not faithful in our tithes, our offerings, and our sacrificial giving. Let me encourage you to start giving 12% of your income back to the Lord. Let me break it down for you. 10% for tithing, 1% for offering, and 1% for sacrificial giving. I'm a witness that this method works and that it will bless your life. You heard the choir sing this morning, press down, shake it together, run it over. When you give unto the Lord, he will give you more. So cheerfully now bring your offering and you'll have blessings running over, running over. Marcus, I'm so glad that my lack didn't stop his love because he looked beyond my faults and met Nicholas at his point of need. And church, when you're going through, focus on his love and work on your lack because no matter how much we lack, he showed his love toward us on a hill called Calvary by paying the sin debt of mankind. No matter how much we lack, remind yourself of what God has kept you from and what God has brought you through. Yes, Remind yourself, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Remind yourself, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. Remind yourself, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Remind yourself, God has not given me a spirit of fear or timidity. Remind yourself, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. First, ain't he all right because my foolishness didn't deter or delay his faithfulness. Secondly, ain't he all right because my lack didn't stop his love. And greater liberty, thirdly and lastly, ain't he all right because me being barren didn't prevent his blessings. My being barren didn't prevent his blessings. 
Titus chapter 3, verses 6 through 7 states, Whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. Church, have you ever found yourself in a dry place? In a barren place where nothing seems to be producing and nothing seems to be productive. I worship, but I'm barren. I read my word, but I'm barren. I pray, but I'm barren. I've come with some simple instructions this morning. Keep on worshiping. Keep on reading. Keep, keep on praying because we've been justified by his grace. And I've become heirs having the hope of eternal life. Church, ain't he all right? Most, most people would tell you why they don't come to church is because they are not good enough or they don't have everything together. But Brother Marcus, I rejoice this morning because I didn't have to get right to get in. Because Titus chapter 3 says, At one time Nicholas was foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. Nicholas lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of our God Savior appeared, he saved Nicholas, not because of the righteous things Nicholas had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So don't allow the enemy to make you think you've got to have all your ducks in a row. That, that's, that's why we come to worship. That's why we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise because not only are there things we lack, but there's some stuff I'm trying to, that I'm doing wrong that I'm praying that God's going to help me to start doing right. So, Sister Tina, in my being barren, I came to Jesus just as I was, weary, worn, and sad, and he has made me glad. Can I go old school and remind somebody, victory is mine. I, I told Satan to get behind victory. Victory today is mine. Joy is mine. I know that joy is mine. Happiness is mine. I told Satan to get me behind. Happiness today is mine. When I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew that the Lord would bring me out. I fell on my knees, said, Lord, help me, please. Got up singing and shouting the victory. Victory is mine. Ain't he all right in spite of my being barren? Didn't prevent his blessings. And Mark, it's my last and final shout on this eighth pastoral anniversary is if you have salvation in Jesus Christ, you can't be removed as the beneficiary. Hey. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. You know beneficiaries are the ones listed on life insurance policies. At the time of death, the individual has a beneficiary that they want the money to go to. And Marcus, money is good and helpful after a loved one passes, but I found an insured by the name of J.E. <laughs> S-U-S that is not only faithful, that is not only loving, that is not only kind, that is not only forgiven, but he's the only insured that provides eternal life to his beneficiaries. Ain't he all right because he walks with me, he talks with me, he tells me I'm his own, and the joy we share, we tarry there, none other has ever known. Ain't he all right because I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despair and cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Marcus, I know he's all right. Sister Tina, I know he's all right. Because one day, I walked up and Elder John Underwood was preaching. Christmas of 1988, Riverview Missionary Baptist Church, 8000 Industrial Park Boulevard, Lenore City, Tennessee. 37771. Jesus Christ, hallelujah. I know he's all right because God touched my heart at that day and saved my soul. I know he's all right because he walks with me and talks with me. I, I know he's all right because he kept me from seeing and unseen dangers. I know he's all right because he's kept Marcus up and down the dangerous highways. I know our Lord and Savior is all right. Because I came every Sunday and Elder Underwood kept on preaching. Kept on preaching. Jesus touched my heart. 
I was lost. I was coming to church. I knew how to do church. I had that thing down, Mark. <laughs> I had that thing down. When to say man, when to clap a little bit. I had it down. But I was lost. But I'm thankful. While Nicholas was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. And greater liberty, I'm telling you, God's about to do something special in this place. I preach this specifically for Marcus because anytime elevation takes place, when elevation, Mark, takes place, sir, get ready for the attacks. You can't go higher in Christ. And the devil not be mad about it. You can't go higher in worship than somebody talking crazy while you walk in the door. You can't go higher in his word. The microphones might start acting up. The devil will use anybody and everything to deter your worship. I tell First Church, I said that the first time you started talking to God is when you heard me preach on that Sunday morning. You need to be talking with God when you get up in the morning. You need to be giving God praise before you get on Chestnut Street. You need to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue to be in my mouth. He's all right because... He's God. God all by himself. Greater liberty, let me encourage you, as I said earlier. Application is a byproduct of worship. Marcus is not preparing for hours and hours for you just to get happy. It's good that you get happy, but there has to be this thing called application. True ministry happens after the benediction. That's when ministry starts. True ministry happens after the benediction. God has given you guys a special assignment. And I'm excited because I'm so excited for the one that he's gave you to lead the assignment. Amen. Amen. You're blessed. He's blessed. It's a two-way street. Love him. Pray for him. Encourage him. Call him and ask him how he's doing. Because we're just flesh. We get down. We get depressed. We don't want to come every Sunday. Hold him. Lift Sister Tina up. Love on her. Encourage her. As she stands beside him and prays for him. I tell Sister Sierra all the time. I say, Sister Sierra, I said, Thank you for standing beside me because, Mark, there's sometimes we have stuff planned and I've got to go. Sometimes I've got to go and minister, and love on people, encourage people. He's at home. Encourage your first lady. They play an important role in the growth of the kingdom. They play a vital role in the pastor being all he or she can be. First, ain't he all right because my foolishness didn't deter or delay his faithfulness. Secondly, ain't he all right because my lack didn't stop his love. Thirdly and lastly, ain't he all right because my being barren 
did prevent his blessings. If you'll stand on your feet with me this morning as the deacons come. Today would be a great day to come to know Jesus. First invitation goes out this morning. It says, Nicholas, I want to come to know this Savior. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus died for your sins. Confess that you want him to be the head of your life. You can have salvation today. Would you come? Secondly, for church membership. Would you come? Hallelujah. First for salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't he all right? <laughs> the angels in heaven are rejoicing. First for salvation in Jesus Christ. Would you come today? Would you come for church membership today? Today would be a great day. I am who I am today because God used my mistakes. He worked them for my good. Like no Worked it, he worked it, he worked it. 
did he work it for my good? Like no one else, no one else ever could. I am who I am, who I am today. Because my God, he used my mistake. for my good like no one no one no one no one no one ever could oh you see I am who I am who I am today because my God my God my God my God my God use my mistakes and he You want to give up? It was necessary. Anybody ever been there when you wanted to give up and throw in the towel? It was necessary. When you were at the end of the road and thought you was gonna going to give up, we come to tell you today. It was necessary. Can anybody testify today that you're here by the grace of God? It was nothing but God's grace. It was necessary. Can I get a witness today to say it was necessary? I'm standing here today because all of my struggles and all of my trials, it was necessary. I know the Lord brought me to it because he was able to bring me through it. It was necessary. Have you ever been down to your last time and Jesus stepped in on time? It was necessary. I've been let on, talked about, mistreated. It was God kept me from losing my mind. It was necessary. It was necessary. I've been messed up, but I come to tell you, it was necessary. It was necessary. The Lord keeps on keeping me every day of my life. Necessary. 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 It was necessary. I thank the Lord for everything that I ever been through because it made me who I am today. Necessary, necessary, necessary. All my trouble. Necessary, 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 necessary. It was necessary. Oh, it was necessary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 
ら。It was necessary. I came to encourage somebody today and let you know that it was. Whatever you're going through, just know the Lord is able to bring you through. You got to encourage yourself and tell yourself it was necessary. No matter what you're going through, hold on to God's unchanging hands. It was. Have you ever been down to your last time and Jesus stepped right in on time? Have you ever been down and out and the Lord made a way somehow? It was necessary. Have you ever been sick, thought you couldn't get well? But Jesus healed your body, now you're able to tell. It's necessary. Yes, it is. Gertie, it was necessary. Hold on to God's unchanging hands. He didn't bring you this far to leave you now. Come on, whole church. Let's encourage ourselves and say it was. It was necessary. Necessary, necessary, necessary. All my trouble and all my pain, all my struggles, it was necessary. Necessary, yes, it is. Necessary, 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 it was necessary. Yes, it is. It was necessary. Hallelujah. It was necessary. It was necessary. 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 It was It was. 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 It's necessary. necessary. It's necessary. It's necessary. What I'm going through. It's necessary. And all of my pain. It's necessary. And all of my struggle. It's necessary. And all of my hurt. It's necessary. My mind. It's necessary. It was necessary. It's necessary. I've been through the storm. It's necessary. And I've been through the rain. It's necessary. It's necessary. It's necessary. It's necessary. It was necessary. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. I know we had several come for prayer today. Sister Bivens. I know we had two that came. If you could give me their names. We have Sister Tana Travis that wants to unite with greater liberty from total Amen. grace. Amen. Amen. So you are coming by letter from total grace. Amen. Where Pastor Robinson is the pastor. Amen. To God be the glory. First, let me say welcome. Amen. And I know you're very well known around here. You ain't no stranger to greater liberty. But we welcome you with open arms. So following today's service, we'll get some information from you and we will reach out to total grace for your letter. And then we will have you complete our new members class. And upon completion of that course, we will then fellowship you in with all rights and privileges from the youngest to the eldest as a member of Greater Liberty Missionary Baptist Church. 
amen, where the feast of the Lord is going on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. Amen. Sister, who else we have? We have Sister Doris Henderson that wants to unite with us from Imani. Amen. I've known Sister Doris a long time. Welcome. I coached her grandson in Little League football for several years. And those of you that know her know she just lost her grandson a year ago, less than a year ago. I thank God for her, pray for her, her daughter, her family, but welcome. We're excited that the Spirit of God led you to unite with us. Amen. And I know you got some gifts. And we're going we gonna to use them too, just to let you know. We're going to use them. Thank God for what he is doing in our midst. So we'll also get some information from you and we will reach out to Imani for your letter and get you enlisted in our new members course. And upon completion, we will then fellowship you in with all rights and privileges as a member of Greater Liberty Missionary Baptist Church. Welcome to where the feast of the Lord is going on. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Church, I want to do one more thing. I need you all. You all can go back if you want um, or you're welcome to stay. But I need the ones that are here. I saw Gertie. Gertie, I need you to come down here. Toya, I need you to come down here. Is is who else? Um, Gwen, Christopher, where's she at? She here? Come down here. I see you, Sister Rhonda. If 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 you can make it down here, I need you to come down here, brothers. If y'all don't mind making room on this bench for these ladies, I, I want you all to sit right here. No, you ask us. And, and Gloria, Jewel, y'all forgive me. But just because it's celebrating the pastor anniversary, it doesn't stop me from being pastor. <clears throat> I also lift the name of LaRue Mosley. I lift Stephanie. Stephanie's in the hospital right now. Stephanie had emergency brain surgery this week. These folk that I've asked to come up here and sit are battling some sickness. Are battling some sickness and some disease in their bodies. Pop, I want you to come. The scripture said, if there's any sickly among you, let them call the elders to lay hands and anoint them. And God will forgive them and provide healing. So if you all don't mind, I'm going to ask my father to come and pray. And we just going to pray for God to be God. That he will do what no other power can do. Because some of you, you're going to be facing, you've already faced some tough times and tough days. But we're going to pray that God will continue to give you more good days than bad days. And he'll give you comfort and peace to endure this time of affliction. Because you know what? This too shall pass. 
trouble does not last always. And don't you know God can let you live with this stuff for years to come and you won't look like what you're going through. Come on, Pop. Unto the all wise God, unto our heavenly Father, there. there is no other God besides Thee. And we come this morning in the name of Jesus. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Forgive us of our sins for Jesus' sake. Master, we need you. And we have 10,000 needs. But on this occasion, at this particular moment, we're praying that you will be Jehovah Rapha. We need you to be a healer. We need you to heal our sisters. Touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Heal their heart. Heal their spirits. Give them strength to endure. Give them the faith to look to the hills. They're all of their help come from you. You can do all things. Show them. For I am in agreement with the prophetic word that was spoken over this church by Elder Nicholas Jones. You're doing and you're going to do great things in this church through this pastor through this fellowship right now this morning in the name of Jesus begin to do your work in the mighty name of Jesus let it begin in these ladies in these sisters Cause them to rejoice in the God of their salvation. Heal me here or heal me over there. Either way, we going to give you the glory. Worthy. 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 Shine your face, your countenance upon these our sisters that even their family will notice the difference in their lives glorify your name glorify yourself and edify your people it's in Jesus name we pray amen it is done it is done trust in the Lord it is done. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care how dark it is. Darker the night, greater the light. And when he shows up, he's going to show out. That's just who he is. You will know the time of his visitation. Amen. Trust him. And next time I come this way, I'm going to get a good report. Amen. Love you. God bless you.
it's about, excuse my voice, uh, but I want to first say thank you to everybody, the committee, the whole church. You all should give yourself a hand because you all have really been a blessing this year to the first family. <clears throat> we started in April with the kickoff, and we've been doing something every month. And we have been blessing the first family every month, not just with monetary gifts or just gifts, but just with your presence. And that means a lot. Uh, first of all, I want to just... Matt and Marcus, because you are a part of this wonderful family, and you all do so much in the church also as young men, and we have seen you grow from little boys to young men, and we are so thankful to have you here, and not only are you here, you are ministering to other young people, and we love that, and we love you, and we want to give you a little token of love and appreciation. <clears throat> I thank everybody for their obedience in uh, I asked that we just did one presentation to the first family this year so that we can get everybody out and he can go and enjoy his family we always get out so late and then it's late when the preachers have to get back home so I appreciate that this, pres this one is for our first lady who we love, who we adore. <laughs> I'm not going to cry because I don't have a voice, so I'm just going to say this. <laughs> I am a crybaby because I have a big heart, and I love everybody. I try to encourage every woman, every man, whoever I come in contact with. I have been, have had the privilege to be on Pastor Appreciation years ago for 12 years. And under, to, under the leadership, I've been able to be there and encourage two former first ladies. But this first lady right here, I don't have the voice to say it, but I always tell her, this girl is on fire. <laughs> she is a bad woman. She is a beautiful young woman with a beautiful heart. And like, I, like myself, she has touched so many other women. And she just keep on giving, and she keep, give on, keep on giving, and just keep on pushing. And she support everything. What we don't hear, <laughs> behind closed door, she's a lady. And she makes sure that we don't hear it. Because she knows how to stand. She knows how to walk tall. And she knows how to hold herself as a sophisticated, black, classic lady. Our first lady, Tina Underwood. Present you with these roses and this candy because you are sweet and you have taken our heart and we love you. Amen. Now uh, <coughs> we have uh, Deacon. Smith gonna come with some encouraging words to the pastor and then after that we have Sister Darlene Lee that will come with your presentation. Praise the Lord everyone. Yeah. 
She sure is. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Sister Hayden asked me to do a presentation and entitled, What My Pastor Means to Me. So in presentation, it is also in tribute to the man of God that God placed at 330 Chestnut Street eight years ago for a time such as this. We are a grateful people for what the Lord has done because at a time when greater liberty needed a pastor after God's own heart, God chose a man that was already standing in the wings, who was anointed and has been appointed to serve in the office of pastor. Every preacher is not a teacher. Every preacher is not a pastor. Those are gifts that God gives to his manservant. And some I gave teachers, some I gave preachers, some pastors, some evangelists. Now, if you think every preacher is going to be a pastor, that's probably why the church world is in the condition that she is in today. Because we've got some men standing in pulpits who were not called and appointed of God to be there. That's just Eric talking. But it is the truth. And pastor, was that the word of God? All right. I, I'll stand on that. But she asked me to do this. She sent me word. Jewel told me I only had two minutes. <laughs> However... Anybody that knows me knows I cannot be micromanaged. <laughs> I'm going to start this off with the word of God. This is a true saying. If a man desires the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth his own house well, having his children in subjection with all gravity. If a man know how to handle, how to rule his own house, then how shall he take care of the house of God? He is not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be of a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. I rise this day giving all praise, honor, and glory unto God my Father, Jesus Christ, my Savior, the Holy Ghost, who is my comforter. A pastor is a minister of a Christian church or congregation. He is a helper, a feeder of the sheep, an elder, an overseer, a shepherd, a guardian, a leader, a protector, and one who leads by example. 
The word of God, as printed in Hebrews 13, 17, says, Obey them that have rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. As they must give an account that they may do it with joy and not grief, for this is not profitable for you. That means don't talk about your pastor. If he goes to God for you, let him go in happy times. Don't have him going for you in grief because he knows what you said about him. Basically, that's what that means. This servant here at Greater Liberty is a true shepherd. He was called by God to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Through prayer, God called him once again, and this time he accepted the call. God sent him to pastor his sheep at the Greater Liberty Baptist Church. You, sir, over the past eight years, have proven to be not just a shepherd, but a great leader. You walk in your purpose and you do it in the strength of Jesus Christ. During COVID, you came to the church and continued to teach your Bible class live on Facebook every Tuesday. Every Sunday, you never missed coming to the church to preach the word of God to the members as we logged in on Facebook. Faithfully, you did what God had you to do. 1 Peter 5 and 14, 1 through 4 says, The elders which are among you I exhort, whom am also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. Not by constraint, but willing. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. You, sir, are watchful. You're prayerful. You are a friend, a brother. To me, a confidant, a comforter a teacher, a good listener, a faithful watchman for my soul. You, sir, are unique, as in Psalms 139 and 13. You are special, as in Ephesians 2 and 10. You are loved, as in Jeremiah 31 and 3. You are important, as in 1 Peter 2 and 9. You are strong, as in Psalms 18, 25. You are forgiven, as in Psalms 103 and 12. You are protected, as in Psalms 121 and 3. You are chosen, as in John 15 and 16. You are cared for, in Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. Sir, we love you. We honor you. We thank God for you because you are our shepherd. Forgive me for not typing that up, but my Microsoft Word, when I got home from work, wasn't working no more. So it'll be typed, it'll be printed, and framed, and presented to you on next Sunday. Excuse me, church. There are several vehicles parked on the end of the parking lot across the street. There's three people who need to leave to go to work. So one of them is Eric, I do recognize him, and there's several other ones. So 
You all can move your vehicles and be kindly appreciated. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> now, again, and I promise this is for me, but this is personal for me to my pastor. Eight years ago, when the Lord sent me here, I was fighting and kicking for you because I already knew that you was going to be the next one. When I form a pastor, and this is personal for, for me to you, because when I passed the former pastor left, for me, and I don't know if anybody else has ever felt it, because I've been here at Greater Liberty a long time, but I was not here, if you know what I mean. When I did really let go and let God, or let God let go, however you say it, it was under John C. Lee leadership. So when he left the church, I felt like a, it was a funeral for me because that was the only real pastor that I knew. And so I sit when I we did come back when I did come back to church and I sit back there with Miss Barbara Jean from Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and listen to you preach. As from I know he's all right to it was necessary. For you to be here, for me to be standing here today, in my guilt, in what God wanted me to do. And I thank you for just waiting and giving me the opportunity to come back in what the Lord wanted me to do. I have learned so much under your leadership. I have learned so much under your leadership. I didn't just hear it. I have learned so much under your leadership. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I will fight. I will kick. I will whatever to make sure that you are okay, that you get what you need, that you get what you deserve. Because I feel that the man that the Lord has sent here as I shepherd, you say, I'm so just simple. Well, we don't have a simple God. I'm not simple. And as long as I'm over the pastor's anniversary, nothing will be simple. <laughs> because you deserve, your family deserve everything. We can't give you what you deserve. We can't pay you what you deserve. But we're going to keep on pushing. And we're going to keep on trying to get there. And I sure will get close one day. I love you, Pastor. I love you. And I really want you to know that when I sit back there, I didn't sit down on you. I sit down on me. And I thank you for bringing that back out of me. I love you, Marcus Underwood. <laughs> pastor and my friend I stand here because I look back eight years ago we were hurting we were a broken church we didn't know from day to day what was going to be but when they called you I knew wounds would be healed um, I look back on things this church needed so much well, a lot of you don't understand, we were so many barrels that were put up against this church. This man removed them slowly, one by one. We regained the respect that we lost. Okay? He 
people are now calling us and asking us what can they do. Used to be no one answer our phone calls. But they heard about this man called Marcus. What or who is he to make a change in a church that was lost? Tina, I thank you for lending your husband to us. The calls that he gets pulled away from his family, but you always stood there as his partner. You didn't let him go into battle alone. You let him do this as a team. Young men, thank you all for letting us use your father and your mother. That's a time that I know could have been well used with his family. I'm not going to be long, but speaking from the finance, we've been in a great green for years. I need for y'all to know that we was in red for so long that all I could see was red. God is blessing us. Look at the things that are happening. Your vision doesn't go unnoticed. I want you to know that. I want you to stay in when I do hand you this. People, when I look back and I think about the giving of this church, my mother used to tell me all the time, people believe in what they see. Okay? When you see things are getting done and things getting done right, guess what? It's right. And it showed. Like Gloria said, we can't pay what you worth. Because I remember when you took the job, we didn't know if we could even give you a paycheck. But it didn't even stop you for your calling. Okay? I need for you all to know that. So when we ask for things for him, understand this man came to us and we couldn't even pay him. And he still got in that pulpit and gave us a full pledged sermon. Okay? He didn't like us. And we're not going to like him. I want to tell you I love you. And thank you. Not only my pastor, my friend. And I want everyone in Greater Liberty to stand and say thank you. Thank you, Elder. Everything. You're everything to me. Everything. To God be all glory. <sighs> I, I just, great liberty, for, I said it a few weeks ago, but I just thank you, not just for loving my family, but how you love my family. I just want to say thank you. I want to just tell my wife
my everything. And I just can't imagine this journey without you. You see things I don't see. Because I'll have tunnel vision. <laughs> I'll have tunnel vision. But you'll see things I don't see. You're a buffer for me. And your patience and understanding. I couldn't ask for a better. Help me for this assignment. And I just want you to know I love you and I thank you. I thank you for who you are. Who you are, you know. See, in case y'all don't know, see, my wife don't know how to be fake. <clears throat> she don't. She don't know how to be fake. Same one you meet in here is the same one you're going to meet on the street. She ain't going to say nothing to you out there that she ain't willing to say to you right here. In any way you need to hear it. <laughs> but I, I appreciate that. I want to give you an opportunity to come son, and just address this body, say thank you. Tell me you love them, do something. <laughs> just so I can wipe my face. Oh, yeah, y'all got me good this year. Y'all had me crying for a while, month, you know, once a month is what I feel like. Um, I want to say thank you to you all. But when we were talking, and I told him congratulations this morning for eight years, we both agreed. It's not our congratulations. This was nothing but the Lord. When he told Marcus he was coming to be the pastor here, I had to pray, because y'all know me. <laughs> I was like, are you sure, Lord, that this is where you want me? And he said, girl, get on board. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say thank y'all to y'all, but I definitely want y'all to just thank the Lord for where we are today. Amen. Amen. To uh, this committee, thank you. Gloria, Jewel, the entire Pastors Appreciation Committee. Daquan, thank you, brother. You know, since you stepped into the role as my armor bearer, he's, he's there for me. I ain't even got calling. And I appreciate you. I do, man. Um, I'm so full, though. Um, to my father, love you, Pop. My first pastor. And even though, you know, I know it's not good for a pastor not to have a pastor. But as far as I'm concerned, you've never stopped being my pastor. And I thank you for always being there for me to call on. If we debating over scripture <laughs> like we did this morning <laughs> or, or if I just need some pastoral guidance thank you for being my pastor to Nicholas man thank you for being my friend thank you for being obedient to the Holy Spirit thank your wife for lending you to me year after year thank you and if anybody tired of him coming every year get over it <laughs> <laughs> this this is my dog right here and he is a blessed preacher and 
<clears throat> and every year he comes, God gives us through this man of God exactly what we need. It's always relevant and right now. So I thank you, and I know it's not a mistake in you being here in the fellowship that God has given you with us. Thank you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I'm through. I, I, I can't talk no more. Cause, but come on, brother. Give us the benediction. Thank you all so much. I love you all so much. Thank you again for loving my family. Continue to keep us in your prayers. Keep us lifted. Continue to pray for all of our sick and shut in. Um, I'm not going to go through the names again, but, but all of them. Sister Arnetta, I heard about the death in your family. Um, there was somebody else that had a death in their family. Who was it? Um, Lawano. Lawano Ramsey lost her father. And then Bob White, praying for you as well, sir, and lost in your family. Amen. Lashina lost her father. Amen. We just continue to be praying for one another. You know, don't just pray for yourself. Y'all remember, so somebody prayed for me. Yes, sir. <clears throat> if somebody prayed for you when you didn't have sense enough to pray for yourself, you ought to be able to lift someone else before the Lord. Amen. To God be all glory. Amen. Pastor Jones. Bless you, sir. Amen. We thank God so much. Give God glory. Thank you so much for your love. We're glad to be back. And God's just blessed us to have a great time. Thank God for Marcus and Tina. Uh, Marcus and I are the same age, uh, but he's been such a mentor to me, he and Elder Underwood as well. And uh, I just thank him for all of his love and his support. Uh, and we're thankful. One thing God gave me before we do the benediction that I want to share with you. Um, God really laid it on my heart um, of this the word. God is taking greater liberty. Um, you know, when you get in an airplane, I told you, I believe last year, that you guys are a, a smaller type plane. You know, a small type plane doesn't take long to get up in the air. Uh, and doesn't take you a long, a long time to get praise. You're not like a 737. You're like a, a Learjet or, or, or a prop plane. Uh, you, you know, you, 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 you praise God. It doesn't take too much for you guys to get going. But what God told me as I was sitting there is, Listen to those beautiful presentations. As many times when you fly, and when you fly in a larger plane, uh, they have to get to a higher altitude when they fly. And Marcus, a lot of times you'll hit this thing called turbulence. Turbulence will rock the plane. Turbulence will make the pilot put on the seatbelt sign. But I want to tell you that no matter how turbulent your life gets, You've got a pilot in Jesus Christ. You've got a pilot. No matter how rocky it gets. No matter how dark it gets. You've got a pilot in Jesus Christ that will take you through the storms. And somebody's getting close. You're getting close because once you finish, Marcus will get through the turbulence. And you're on a long flight or even on a short flight, they'll take off the fasten the seatbelt sign. Amen. And somebody in the sanctuary this morning, when you come to worship, you you too many times you're putting on your seatbelt. You sit there like you don't know who God is. You're sitting there like you don't know that you can clap your hands or give God praise. You just need to unfasten your seatbelt. Because you're about to hit some cruising altitude. <laughs> Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. Thank you for these pastors and ministers. God bless you. Thank you for your love, this membership. Thank you for my wife and our family. God bless you. Thank you so much. Let's go. Let's go home. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Oh, God, we thank you for another day. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, for blessing Elder Marcus. God, blessing Sister Tina and their children. Oh, God, what a powerful family. God, we pray for Marcus' sons. God, that you would put a hedge of protection around them. God, we pray, Lord, for Elder Underwood, Miss Underwood, Lord, as they travel back to Knoxville. 
God, we pray that you give us traveling grace as we head back that way as well. Be with this church called Greater Liberty. Oh, thank you for eight years. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord before all ages, now and forever. Let the church say amen.